point, or excuse me, 0 0.046599 milligrams is equal only to one forty-third of a single two milligram tablet. Is that accurate? That's accurate, yes. Is that an exceptionally trivial amount? It's a very small amount, yes. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. May we have the lights, please? We cross Mr. Flanagan. You indicated that the levels in the blood explain what is happening currently with respect to the drug effect. Yes. The levels in the urine are more of historical, though, aren't they? Yes. And like in your example where you've got the uh, uh, ephedrine present in the urine, not in the blood, you can, you can learn from that that ephedrine was taken quite some time in the future or, or in the past, and it's been metabolized out of the blood. Correct? Correct. Because the urine, everything that goes into the bladder comes out of the blood, doesn't it? Yes. Blood circulates through the kidneys. The kidneys take out certain waste materials, whether it's water, drugs, or whatever, and everything in the bladder comes through the kidneys. Okay. And the kidneys only get it out of the blood. Again, you're, you're starting to get beyond my level of expertise. So when you got ephedrine present in the bladder, you know that at some point in time there was ephedrine in the blood, don't you? Correct. Now, the, the bladder in, in, or the urine has historical significance in that in the event that you were, say, have a high concentration of ephedrine in the blood, and a very low concentration in the bladder, you would know that the ephedrine was recently taken, wouldn't you? Be a fair assumption, yes. And it's the same thing with propofol, isn't it? I think I early, er, earlier stated that I am not familiar with the excretion patterns of propofol, and I don't know how well it distributes into the urine, specifically. Are you familiar with the excretion patterns of ephedrine? I have a better sense of that drug than I do propofol. So propofol, you just don't have the expertise to, to correlate its excretion into the urine with respect to how much was in the blood? That's true, yes. And you wouldn't be able to give us a timing estimate either? No, I would not. Would you with lorazepam? Beyond their expertise, as is previously indicated, Your Honor. Is it beyond your expertise? It is. It's certainly. You guys are touching on beyond my expertise. Sustain. By looking at the urine results and comparing it with the blood results, though, you can you can predict whether. The substance was taken at a point in time close enough that the body hasn't had a chance to come into equilibrium, can't you? Speculation beyond his area of expertise. Beyond the scope. Sustain. Okay. So, but if there's nothing in the blood, there's some in the urine, it means it's taken a long time ago, but if it's high in the blood and nothing in the urine, it means it's taken very recently. The drug, doesn't it? In a general scheme, yes, but again, you have to know your, have knowledge that it does excrete into the urine. There are some drugs that just don't excrete into the urine. But you don't know whether propofol does or not? That's correct. Okay. Uh, when you did the gross uh, calculation of milligrams of lorazepam contained in the stomach, 
Is this something uh, Mr. Walgren asked you to do? Sustain. In the event that a person were to take, say, seven or eight tablets of of uh, the rasapam, and it was in, and and you were to analyze the stomach contents, and you found all. Say you found a 14, 16 milligrams of the raspam in the stomach. You'd know that it was just taken, wouldn't you? Yes, if I'm analyzing the stomach for lorazepam in that scenario, it would be a lot of lorazepam in the stomach, and the interpretation would be very recently ingested, possible abuse of the drug. Okay. And in the event that you were looking at the at the stomach contents, and by virtue of of a blood sample, you were able to determine that a person had had seven or eight had to have seven or eight lorazepam pills, and you found the stomach contents very low you would know that the lorazepam was taken some time ago, wouldn't you? Objection, Ms. Stacey, testimony. I'll overrule it. You may explain. Well, I, I'm, I'm having difficulty following you on this question, so... Okay. When a person takes pill... Objection okay. is beyond the scope of his expertise, Your Honor. Let's have the whole question asked, please. When the person takes the pill... And there's not much left in the stomach. And this assume you know the person's taken a pill, but there's not much left in the stomach. You'd know that the, per that the person's had time to absorb the pill that he took, wouldn't you? Objection, speculation beyond his area of expertise. Sustain. Uh, speculation or expertise? Both. And 352. Okay, would you would you have the uh, do you have the expertise to determine to, to venture an opinion that there's only a small quantity of a drug left in the stomach, but you've got a large quantity of it in the blood that it's been taken quite some time ago? Objection, vague, relevant, 352. Would it depend upon a drug in any case? Well, it, it would do, depend on the drug and how well it gets absorbed. It would depend on, you know, a scenario of that the person didn't vomit and, you know, get the drug out of their system through the vomit. Um, it, it's a lot of speculation because everything has to be based on a scenario and the case scenario specifically. It's very difficult to talk hypothetically. Overall. Okay, if a person, so you'd want to know if the person vomited? Uh, if, you, if you could determine from a blood level that a person had to have so much of a drug that's taken orally, you can, you can do that with various drugs, can't you? Objection. Big. Speculation, relevance, sustain. Okay, we've got uh, 0.04 milligrams lorazepam in the stomach. If the individual that contains that amount of lorazepam in the stomach had taken the razepam. You cannot tell how much they took based upon that figure, can you? Objection A. Beyond the scope, improper hypothetical, beyond his level of expertise. Overall, if you're able to answer. Uh, I agree. I, I personally would rather leave this to a pharmaco pharmacologist who would be coming. Well, when you're talking about gross quantities in the stomach, that, that gross quantity is going to change over the absorption phase, isn't it? 
objection beyond his area of expertise. I'm sustaining the objection. 352 as well. Do you know anything about the absorption time for a lorazepam pill? Objection. 352, previous rule. Overruled. You may answer. I, I think I've already said that I looked at Dr. Basalt's book. I'm sure it's in there. Don't don't didn't, don't remember what it says, and I wouldn't want to testify to it. Uh, I've got the basalt the salt article on uh, lorazepam. Well, Could I approach? Refresh his recollection. Just a moment, please. I don't believe so. Uh, first, you've got to get to the issue of whether he has an opinion on, on what he may have relied. So I'm sustaining the objection. You did consult the salt on the raspam, didn't you? Objection. Relevance. Sustained. Did you use the basalt article in forming your opinion? On the Rasipan? Objection assumes facts not in evidence. He's indicated he did not form an opinion on that question. The objection is sustained. You got the the half life information from Basalt? Objection has an answer. Overall. Yes, I did. Did you read the entire uh, the 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 entire two pages of Basalt's article on the Rasipan? At some point of time, I have, yes. And it's, it would be your opinion that you have forgotten what he said about absorption? Objection, argumentative, misstates the testimony, he's indicated he did not rely on it. The objection is sustained. Would you rely upon it if you uh, remembered it? Objection, relevance. All right, sustained. We're going to have to move to an another subject, Mr. Flanagan. Thank you. 352. I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Mr. Walgren, re redirect? No, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. May Mr. Anderson step down subject to recall? Mr. Walgren. Please, Your Honor. Mr. Flanagan? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Anderson, I want to thank you for your testimony. Do not discuss your testimony or the facts of the case with any other witnesses until we finish the trial. And while you may step down and leave, you are to remain on call, and that means you're subject to recall up until the end of the trial. Thanks, sir. Thank you. You're welcome.